Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to My Quilting Life. Today's video is an unboxing. That's right, an unboxing of a machine I already own. And you're like, Tiffany, really? Another Juki? Mm hmm that's right. <laughs> I can't get enough of the Juki brand. And today's video, we are gonna unbox the Juki TL2010Q. Yes, I already own this machine. Yes, I can show you everything about it, so let's get to it. But first, we need to open the box and get the machine out. That's where I bring in the handy dandy husband to do that part for us. <laughs> I better I bought her get my face out of the way of that one. All right, so when you first open your brand new Juki TL2010Q, right on top you should see a book. Do we ever read these books? No, actually, yes, but for now, no. <laughs> the second thing right on top is a knee lift, and it looks as if this knee lift is the same as my HZL F600 Exceed series knee lift. It is not the same as my original Juki's knee lift. They've changed the design on the knee lift. Let me show you. Here is my original knee lift. That's actually easier on the leg. This one is a lot thinner. So we'll see if I can get used to that one. And then right on top, we also have a handy dandy foot pedal. And right on top, we have some handy dandy parts and tools and even oil. This one came with oil. Look at that. My last one didn't come with oil. I had to buy that separately. So they're like changing things. Look at that. So we'll get to all the stuff in here and what it is and all about it once we get everything out of the box. Next is a cord. Can't do anything without that. So we need our cord. All right, so in this box right here along the side, you're gonna find an extension table in here. So we're just gonna open this up and this will be our extension table, which is, should be the same unless they change the design. Remember, I did buy my original Juki seven years ago. So we're gonna see what's the same and what is different. Nope, it's exactly the same, so that part has not changed. So that is exactly the same. All right, let's check and make sure nothing else in the box. Oh, wait, the cover for the machine. Can I be honest? I never used the original cover from the original machine. I just let it get dusty, but they, they come with one. <laughs> All right, let's have the husband pull this beast out. There's a handle right there. I see. It makes it easy that it has a handle. And then it comes right out just like that. And we're just going to I'm back now. <laughs> we had to pass things out of the way. Ooh, beautiful machine. Look at this thing. Isn't it just adorable? All right, so this is what they look like. Brand new, out of the box. I mean, it's so clean compared to my other Juki. So clean, fresh, fresh, clean. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna bring the camera up close and I'm gonna show you everything I know about this Juki because I know a lot because I've owned one for quite some time and now I have a second because my original had issues and well, it's nice to have a second of my favorite machine 
which is this one. This is the best machine I have ever owned for piecing uh, free motion quilting, although I don't do that on it anymore, but it's great for that. And so much more, like you can make clothes with it and all sorts of other things because it's a straight stitch only machine and it goes fast. So let's get to seeing everything about it. Okay, so here it is from the front, the Juki TL2010Q. The first thing that we are gonna do is remove the tape. Okay, if it'll come off. There we go, that has been removed. The next thing we are gonna do is show you all the things that I can show you. First off, we have our stitch length. So this dial is your stitch length. You can go all the way to a zero, which is good for free motion quilting, or you can have a one or 1 1.5 for like paper piecing, or a two for manual, not manual, regular piecing, regular quilt piecing, or you can go for a three if you're say top stitching and it's like 10 stitches per inch that you're looking for for straight line quilting. Or you can go all the way to a six, which is like a basting stitch. So either way you like to do things, this dial right here is your stitch length. The next button we have directly under that is your thread cutter. Yes, that is right. The Juki TL2010Q comes with a thread cutter. Not only is there a button to cut the thread, but if you press down on the heel of your foot pedal, that will also cut your thread. So just know that it's either this button or the heel of your presser foot. Not presser foot. See, I can't even talk. My, the heel of your foot, the, the driving foot. <laughs> the next thing under here is a needle up and down button. That is used to make your needle go up and down. So if you need it up and out of the way, that's how you do it. If you need it down to hold it down in one spot as you pivot while you're making a quilt or quilting, that button comes in handy. The next thing is this lever. This lever is your reverse. As you can see, it does have an arrow that shows you reverse. So that is your reverse. To directly to the side of that is a rabbit and a turtle. If you want to sew slow and be a turtle and go so very very, very slow. That setting is for you. If you are feeling confident, but you're not that confident, you can put it in the middle and you can go just a little bit faster, just a little bit faster. But if you want to sew like me, you go up to the bunny and go so fast, so fast, so fast, so fast, 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 fast. That's right. You go very fast. <laughs> Directly at the bottom, you have your feed dogs up and down. So right now they are in the up position. Your feed dogs are what's under your presser foot. Under your presser foot, those feed dogs is what pulls the fabric through at an equal pace as your needle goes up and down. So if you are free motion quilting, you would put your thread or your thread, your feed dogs in the down position so that you can do your free motion quilting. So we're going to put that back in the up position. Next, we're going to turn this to the side. So right here on the side, you have your hand wheel. Always, always turn your hand wheel towards you. So when you are done, bring it towards you. So that would be this way, which to me that is counterclockwise, I think. Yeah, counterclockwise. The next thing, then you have your plug-in. So that is where your power is going to go in and out. And in a minute, we will plug something into that. The next thing is your foot pedal plug. So this right here, this black plug underneath your power is where your foot pedal is going to plug into. Then we have your on and off switch. Make sure you turn your machine off when you are not using it. How do I know? Well, because I already blew a motor in one of my machines. <laughs> so make sure you keep it off when you are not in use. Even if you're just walking out of the room for 20 minutes, turn the machine off. All right, let's turn it around again. Back here, you also have a vent back here. You also have your thread. I don't know if you can see that, but you have your thread spool things. So here's where your thread spools go. This is for big cones. So this right here can be removed if you're using small cones. But if you're using big cones, this is what you would put down and put on. 
And it also comes in the package with a cap for the smaller cones. Also, as well as the thread guide, which lifts up and down, which you will see when we get to that. Also, on the back side, you have your foot up and down if you are not using your knee lift, just like any other machine. It's usually on the back or right here on the side to lift your foot up and down. All right, let's turn it to this side right here. On this side, you have a thread cutter. Uh, that is if you're pulling it away manually and you need long tails of thread for tying off or whatever you feel like using it for. But honestly, I have had my machine, my other one for over, like I've had it for seven years now and I've, I've probably used it 20 times at the most, this little side cutter, but it's there. The next thing is your access to your bobbin case. So your bobbin case and everything and to clean it and everything is right here on the side. So you just lift that up and put it down when you are changing your bobbin, which I will show you how to do all that. Back to the front side. We're going to go right here on the front at the top top that you can see. You have your pressure, presser foot pressure gauge. Try to say that 10 times fast. So your presser foot pressure gauge is actually going to put tension on your foot. So if you need to have it tighter for thinner fabrics, you would put it down. If you are, say, working with three layers of batting, then you would turn this knob and this wheel right here, you can see in this window, this wheel will turn that up and you can have less pressure or more pressure on your presser, presser foot pressure gauge. Like I said, I can't say that fast. The next thing you have is your tension, or your tension. It is your tension. It's your thread guide. So all this works your tension. You'll have this where your thread goes in, and I'll show you how to thread it. This is your pre-tensioner. This right here in this slot is where your thread guide, it's a thread guide that goes in and helps the thread go in and out. Then there's another thread guide. Then there's your tension right here. There's the thread guide, thread guide, and this is your needle threader, which I'm not sure I'll be able to show you how it works because sometimes I can do it and sometimes I cannot. And then thread guide right here, as well as it goes into the needle. Actually, it's changed. Oh, no, it's not. It's the same. Okay, it's right there on the side, right there. All right, so that's that. On the top of your machine, you will find a handle. It is a very heavy duty handle. It is metal and it is bolted down in there very nicely. You also have this thread guide right here. That is the thread guide you use for winding bobbins. Right here on this side where your hand wheel is, on this side right here, this is your bobbin winder mechanism. This is very easy to use, but you cannot wind a bobbin while sewing on this machine. So sorry folks, if you're looking for that, you can't do it on this machine. It does have a bobbin winder built in. So now that I have showed you all that, let's get to uh, showing you how this all works. Oh, and I forgot right here. This hole right here on the front, this hole right here on the front, that is where your knee lift will go in. So right here is your knee lift. It just slides right into that slot. And even when you have your extension table on, your knee lift is highly easy to use, and you can see it's lifting the foot as I'm talking to you. So there's where the knee lift goes, in case you were wondering. All right, so let's get to some other specs of this machine, like threading it, turning it on, and everything else. All right, we're going to start with winding a bobbin. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lift this up all the way, as far up as it will go. You're going to grab yourself a spool of thread. You're going to be placing that spool of thread over the big spool holder, just like that. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to open the bag of goodies and we're going to pull out a bobbin. So these metal things right here, these are your bobbins and we're going to be winding a bobbin. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the thread tail, we're going to come up over this hook up here. And then we're going to come down right here to this hook. And we're going to go in it and over itself, just like that. Okay, and once you have it in it and over your, itself, 
we're going to thread the end of the thread through the hole in the bobbin. And you're just going to hold it there. You're going to place this bobbin on this right here, this knob, and you're going to make sure that that other hook right there lands on this little tiny hook piece right there. So it's got a little notch. It goes in that notch. Then you pop this back, hold that spool thread, and press go. If you hold that thread long enough, it'll cut itself because there is a cutter on the end of the bobbin. So you just let it do its thing. It's very quiet when it winds a bobbin. Well, at least for the first year, it's very quiet when, it when you wind a bobbin. <laughs> then you're just gonna pop that. You're going to be lifting this up and you're just going to snip it off of there. Okay, so there is a fully wound bobbin. We're just gonna set that aside and we're gonna take the thread now and unhook it from that and we are gonna thread this machine. So we're gonna take the thread, keeping it where it is, it doesn't matter which one it's on. You're gonna to come to this first hole right here. You're gonna go down into that hole, bring yourself back up. You're gonna go into the second hole, down through that second hole, bring it back up. Down through that third hole, oops, try not to let it tangle, bring it back up. Now you're gonna go between this first disc. This disc right here is your pre-tensioner. You never really have to turn this dial. That dial, just leave it alone. But we are gonna take the thread between those discs. Then you're gonna come down right here, and there's two discs in between this slot right here. Make sure that your presser foot is up. See, when it's up, it releases it. When it's down, it closes it. Make sure your presser foot is up. And you're gonna go between those two discs, up and around, and you're gonna grab this little hook right here. See this hook that I'm grabbing? You're gonna grab that hook. You can see that I have grabbed that hook, and then we're gonna come down and under this seven. This little bar is the number seven. Then we're gonna come through this first piece right here, snap it in there, up to here, wind it around that, back down through that to this next right here, come through that next guide, then you're gonna to come to this guide right before the needle. Be very careful with this guide because it can break, and I'm telling you because I've broke one before. We're gonna go behind that, and now it's next to the needle, and what we're gonna do is make sure that the needle is in the up position all the way by pressing needle down, needle up. We're gonna press down the presser foot. We're gonna take this lever right here, and we're gonna take our thread behind that metal piece and in between this plastic piece right here. And then we should be able to just, oops, it's kind of hard with the camera right here to do this, behind that, in front of that. And then, see, I always struggle with this. As soon as I let go, it gets stuck and it doesn't thread it. See, I have problems with the needle threader. If you can figure it out, good for you, but we'll try one more time for me. It's not in there. It's not in there. Yeah, see, it's not gonna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread it the way I thread my other machine by using my little tool. Remember, this needle is sideways, so we're just gonna pull it through. It goes in sideways, and there we have a threaded top part of the machine. So again, I'm just gonna go through this without unthreading it. From up here, your thread comes up, doesn't matter which one you're on, through this guide, down to these three holes, in, 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 through this first disc, down on the back side, so which would be your right side of this disc, through that, around it into this hook right here. Once it's in that hook, go under the number seven, through this guide, 
up into this hook, down back through the guide, through the next guide, through the next guide, and then through the needle. And again, the needle threads from left to right. All right, so now let's put a bobbin in here. Here's your bobbin casing. Inside of there, which is going to be hard to see, we'll turn it just a little so that the cameraman can get it. And here is the bobbin. Now we're going to pop out the case for the bobbin by lifting the lever that's on there. It's kind of hard to show you with my hand in the way, but you just plop it out by lifting that open and pulling it out. Close it to release the bobbin, and this is covered in oil. We're just going to set that aside and wipe our hands on our shirt. <laughs> And then we're going to take the bobbin that we wound. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. We're going to take this bobbin, and it's going to come out to the right, just like this. So while it's coming out to the right, we're going to stick it in our bobbin case, coming out to the right, and it's going to go in that first slot, that little tiny slot right there. Then we're going to come up and through to that top hole. And there it's threaded, just like that. Now I would not touch your tension for your bobbin right now because it should be set perfectly when you first get it. So we're gonna pop this into the machine with the little handle sticking out, and then we're gonna close it down and lock it in there. And then all you have to do is close it. Okay, so now that we have it threaded, I grabbed a pair of snips and I grabbed some thread. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run a test piece real quick. And yes, I sew very fast. And I'm using the knee lift. That's sewing slow. And I'm going to come to this end right here. And I'm going to put this down on turtle so you can see how slow turtle is with my foot all the way down on the pedal. So that's turtle. Okay. Now say you want to, you can go faster now. So that's a little bit faster. Faster. And faster. Or back to super fast. And I can control that with my foot. As you can see, I can sew slow, medium, or fast with just my foot. And then again, if you press your heel on the pedal, it will actually cut the thread. And you can see that goes super quick. Then you lift, pull it away, and you can see that I have beautiful stitches. So there is the back stitching right there. And there is the top stitches. The tension is perfect right out of the box every time. And if it is not, it's just a little bit of an adjustment right here, this knob. Do not touch this one, only this one. We don't ever mess with the pre-tensioner unless you absolutely have to for very thicker fabrics if you're gonna be making bags or if you're gonna be using thicker uh, thread. So just know that the pretensioner, if you have thicker thread, that's when you start adjusting things. But for the most part, you only touch this tension dial. So there's that. Then you just turn it right to left, right, left, to right, whatever which way, if you're bringing, if you're turning it towards the right or clockwise, you're pulling the bobbin tension back up to where it's supposed to be. That means you're seeing eyelashes in the bobbin on the underside. And if you're turning it clock, uh, counterclockwise, that means you're putting your top thread back down to the bottom because you're seeing your bobbin thread on top. So just know if you have eyelashes on bottom from the top thread, turn it to the right. And if you have eyelashes on top from the bobbin, bobbin, then you turn it to the left. So I'm just going to leave it right about here for now because that's where it was. We're going to make sure one more time. Sewing beautifully. Look at that. So I'm just going to 
cut that thread. The thread mechanism is actually inside the bobbin case area. And I probably should have showed you that. So let me pull this out. We're gonna turn the machine. So inside of here, you don't really wanna mess with anything, but if you ever see dirt or anything in there, this thing right here, this knob, this thing that I'm pushing on, that's actually the thread cutting mechanism, okay? Just let, I let you know. So don't ever have your hands in there when you're pressing the thread cutter. So I'm gonna press the thread cutter while you guys see what it's doing in there. See? So that's what it does. Don't ever have your fingers in there when pressing that button. So keep your foot off of the pedal if you're using the thread cutter. Keep your foot off the pedal when you're changing the bobbin because you definitely don't want that to get your fingers. All right, so I'm gonna run this through again. Just like that. Now we are going to look into our box of goodies. So we're gonna put you guys back a little bit. It comes with a flathead screwdriver. That is so you can change your needle right here. This little notch that I'm pointing the screwdriver at is where you change your needle. So when your needle is up, that's where you would turn that, pop the needle out, and your needles will have a groove in them so that you know which way it is supposed to go. Here's the needles that it uses. Now you can buy your own brand. I, it comes with organ needles and I've always used organ needles on my Jukies. So just letting you know, you can buy whatever brand you would like. Just know that they need to be for this machine and that's the number you're looking for right there. Okay, then it comes with oil. Now you're asking, where do I oil? Why do I have to oil? You don't have to do it that often. And according to one of my friends, Juki just released a statement saying you do not need to oil them as much as I oil my other Juki. But when I oil mine, underneath here, there's some oiling ports uh, with wicks. My wicks are always clean, not dirty. So I'm pretty sure with the amount of use I get with my machine, um, I'm oiling mine just right. So I oil mine once a week, twice a week if I'm sewing, you know, multiple quilts over and over, which I tend to do. But this machine will not need to be oiled very often, maybe once every three months, because this one is my backup machine now. So there are six oil ports on this machine. And what you would be doing is there is an oil port right here. So you're going to see right here. We're going to show you the bed first. There's two screw holes right here. That is for a guide. So if I use a magnetic seam guide, if you've been watching my videos a long time, but right here are two screw holes for an actual metal guide that has a stick and you can adjust it. Let's put that up here for a second. You can actually adjust that guide and it screws into these two holes. So that's what that is for. Those do not put oil in them. Your actual oiling port is this one right here that I am pointing at right now. It's the rear hole. So you would just put a drop in there. Then we're gonna move over here to the other one here on the base. So you can see I'm far over here on the right side now. There is another hole. There is a bed for the oil to land underneath that. So you're gonna put a drop in there as well. Then we're gonna to move to the top of the machine. So on the top of the machine, and we're gonna lean this forward so that you can see, right here on the top of the machine, can you see that? Here is a oiling port right here on the front, right in front of your presser foot pressure gauge. That has a wick underneath it. That one, you put a drop in there. That will oil this right here, your presser foot, and your needle up and down, that oils that. So as the needle goes up and down, the oil comes from right here, keeping that nice and lubed. Then you have a second one right here at the top. That one has a little pan that it lands in. You just need a drop. That'll oil the other mechanisms that are right here inside the machine. Again, it's all metal. I cannot tell you the name of the parts. I can just tell you what I know because I've taken mine apart before. Then if you scoot the machine over, you're going to see some more holes. Now, this is not a hole to put anything in. This is not a hole to put anything in. But this hole right next to your handle 
That one has a wick in it. So you're just gonna put a drop of oil in that. And then there is a bigger hole right here. This one runs all the stuff that's down in there that moving me mechanisms. There is a little tray that keeps that oiled. You just put a drop of oil in that as well. So that takes care of your hand wheel and all the moving parts. Again, this is a mechanical machine. Everything is metal on the inside, so they do need to be lubricated. And again, like I said, Juki has released something that says once every three months, put your drop of oil in there. If you see your wick is turning black, that means you're putting too much oil. Mine on my other machine have not, so I think I'm oiling mine just fine, but for video's sake and for trying to be smart, Oil once every three months or look at your manual because your manual will tell you what to do. And again, that is that book we threw aside when we first opened the machine. Open this up, read what it says. I never do that, but you know, that's because I am who I am. <laughs> All right, let's get to some of the stuff that comes in this little goodie bag other than this and that. And the needle. So we get the needles, the oil, you get your screwdriver. And that screwdriver can also undo these if you need to clean under your feed dogs. Oops, I'm trying to cut that thread. So there's your feed dogs right there. Again, remember this one is feed dogs up and down. So that has lowered the feed dogs. And when you first turn this knob back up, it does not lift the feed dogs. What actually lifts them is when you put your foot down and you start to sew. Did you hear that click? I'm pretty sure you didn't, but if you were here in person, you would have heard a small, quick click. And that just means the feed dogs have lifted themselves back up. All right, the next item that comes in here is a brush. That little brush cleans out the dust in here. It cleans out the dust in your bobbin area. Use it or you will regret it. <laughs> Then there's this weird looking tool right here. That is actually the key that unlocks cleaning underneath here where you're um, under your feed dogs and stuff to get all that dust under there. That is actually the true key that opens that. But for me, I have always just used the flathead like this because I get a little bit more leverage by turning it like this. So that's up to you whether you want to use the key. Don't lose it because you may want to use it. Then, of course, the machine came with one bobbin inside of it and four bobbins on the side. The one is covered in oil, so it's not in my hand, but it does come with four bobbins. The next thing it comes with is, you're wondering what this strange contraption is right here? All right, so this little strange contraption right here, yep, that is gonna go right here when you replace the foot because that is your zipper foot. So if you've never seen one of these before, this is what a zipper foot looks like for the Juki. When you change your feet, there is a big, huge screw right here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But for now, just know this is your zipper foot. Then here's that spool topper I was talking about in the beginning. So if you're using a smaller spool of thread, this actually just goes, well, I'm making a stack right here, but up on the top, it actually goes up. Can you see back here? this pole right there at the top of the screen. Okay, that goes on there when you're using a smaller spool of thread. The next thing it comes with is this big old beast. This is your walking foot. This thing, I'm, I've never been too fond of the walking foot for the Juki, but maybe they've changed it. So we're gonna plug it in and see. I mean, hook it up and see, cause it doesn't need to be plugged in, but that is the walking foot. So when you're stitching, quilting, whatever you want to use a walking foot for. It is for evenly feeding the fabric through. There are teeth under here, just like that. Those teeth grab the fabric from the top and your bottom fabric and feed them in equally as this piece goes up and down with the movement of your needle, which I will show you momentarily. The next thing that comes in the bag and you're wondering, oh my goodness, now I don't know what that is. Most people don't know, but this is a darning foot or free motion quilting foot for those who want to know. But in reality, the original term was a darning foot. Anyways, what is a darn foot doing in here? Well, this is for free motion quilting. So this also hooks up to the machine. You change the foot and put it on 
and I will show you how to do that as well. But this is for when you load your fabric, drop your feed dogs, and you move your fabric around instead of the fabric being pulled through the machine for you. This is for decorative purposes if you want to learn to free motion quilt. So that is everything that came in the box. What we're going to go ahead and do now is we are going to put the extension table on here and then we're going to show you how to put these feet on and how they are used. So give me a second to clean up my mess right here and get showing you how all that works. All right, extension table time. So just find the opening of the bag, pull the extension table out, and we're going to pop these feet out right here. And six, there are six feet. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it over the machine just like that. And there's these little knobs down on the bottom, these black knobs. You can turn them to lower or higher this depending on your table and how flat your table that it is sitting on is. So I'm just going to flatten all these down. So that way this is nice and level with the machine. So I'm just turning all the little black grippy dot knobs down so that this is all flush. And that's flush, that's the way I want it. Again, your knee lift can just go right back in underneath just like that so that you can use that while you are free motion quilting and or sewing or piecing or however you do this. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put you on the side of the machine and I'm gonna show you how to change the feet. All right, here we are on the side of the machine. Here's this big, huge screw right here. Make sure that your presser foot is up. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to use the screwdriver we're going to turn that away from us. So lefty Lucy. We're going to go ahead and start with the zipper foot. So here is the zipper foot. What you're going to do is these two bars right here are all, they're just going to go right here. Loosen that screw enough. And you are just going to slide it in. And then just tighten it down. Give it a slight turn right here, just like that, and it is screwed in there. Now it's first setting. There is a green screw on the back. That helps adjust my zipper foot where I need it. So right now you can see my zipper foot is on the, with the needle on the right. So I just put it in the right position. We're gonna make sure that my needle is not touching that foot because we don't want it to hit and it is not hitting. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make sure that screw is tightened down. We're gonna grab a piece of fabric and we're gonna pretend that we're just sewing with our zipper foot. We're not pretending, we really are sewing with it. So you can sew right next to your zipper, just like this, okay? And or you can adjust that green knob again and slide it to the opposite side. Tighten it down, make sure that your needle is not hitting the foot, okay? And we're just gonna come down right here, put the foot back down again, and we're gonna sew on the opposite side. So we're gonna cut the thread, and you can see my zipper foot, everything is sewing beautifully. Okay, so there's the zipper foot, and that's how it works. So we're gonna go ahead now and remove the zipper foot. Unscrew it. You don't have to take the screw all the way out, just enough to get those around. And there's the screw I was adjusting from the backside. Again, you can just loosen it and tighten it, just like that, from where you want it, and there you go. So there's the zipper foot. Let's move on to the big, huge walking foot. This one, you have to pull the screw all the way out for. And let me zoom you out a little bit for this. This foot is a bit bigger. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take this knob and we are going to take, oh, I got to show you this knob right here too. So this up and down thing is going to line up with your screw on the side. And then you're also going to be putting this all the way around the pin. So you're kind of like doing a little sideways motion here. So let me show you again by unhooking that. It's just like a sideways motion of hooking that at the same time, aligning that bar. We're going to put that screw back in and tighten it down. And I'm going to come around front and show you from the front side before screwing it down what I'm holding and doing here because I definitely don't want you to lose the idea of it. So this lever is going to hook onto this knob right here, which is the needle bar where you change your needle. So you're going to make sure that it's on that as you hook the other side, just like this onto that thing and guide it on there at the same exact time. So it takes a second to get used to, but once you're used to it, it should go pretty quick each time. Again, this is a walking foot, so this is an even feed foot. We're going to get that screw back in there. Okay. Oops, I just unthreaded the darn thing at the same time. We're going to lift that needle up a little bit higher, get this thread back in here, screw it down. I'm going to run that thread through the center. We're going to make sure this is nice and tight on here because it will come undone. We're going to go ahead and stick this under here now. And I'm going to change my stitch length to a three. Oops, that was not supposed to happen. Very sorry for that. And we're going to stitch. It's not as loud as my other one. I got to move it back. There we go. Nope, it's as loud when you go as fast as I do. This is how, how it sounds. It sounds like a machine gun. So that is why I don't use my walking foot. It's not very quiet. So if you're trying to be conscientious of other people in your house, just know that it is very loud to sew with this. And I've said in many videos, I think Juki needs to rethink how their walking foot is made because it is pretty loud. Anyways, all right. So there is the walking foot. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. You can see my three stitch uh, uh, three. That's how it's stitching. Beautiful stitches. The back side tension is perfect. Look at that right out of the box. The tension is great. All right. Now we're going to move on to the next foot. So I'm going to keep you in the same position now, but just remember that screw on the side. That's the screw we're going to use every single time to change the feet out. All right. So for this one, we have to take it all the way out again. We're going to remove the foot and set it aside. And now we're going to back you up just a little bit. Last but not least, here is the foot. So this is your darning foot and or free motion quilting foot. We're going to go ahead and place that screw back in there most of the way right there. And we're going to take this hook on this side and we're going to put that underneath it just like that. And then we're just going to hold it in place while we screw it in just like this. And now it's screwed in. It's nice and tight. And for video's sake, I made myself a little quilt sandwich. Look at that. So what we're going to do is we are going to drop the feed dog. So remember right here, this lever, push it down and you'll see the little arrows being under the line, that means the feed dogs are down. The little arrows being above the line, sorry for the focusing, that means the feed dogs are up. So to the right, the feed dogs are down. Now we're also going to come up here. Remember I told you about the presser foot pressure gauge? We are going to turn that knob lifting the presser foot pressure up. So you can see right in here that presser foot pressure is up and I have it most of the way up. I'm not going to go all the way up, but it's most of the way up. So now you can see in this window, you can see it's pretty much all the way up. So when I put this foot down, 
I don't have too much extra tension on this and I can move my fabric around once this starts going up and down. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put my needle down and then put my presser foot down, needle up, and I'm gonna bring my bobbin thread to the top. It's very tiny at first. All right, bobbin thread is at the top. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple stitches right here in place, tying it off just like that. And then I'm gonna start stitching. And I just move the thread out of the way. It's gonna get itself out of the way. And what we're gonna do is this is what your free motion foot does. We move the fabric and that's it. So keep your fingers out of the way of the needle. And we're gonna have to lift that pressure up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my thread tail off. Right there. And you can see I'm the one in control now of my stitch length, my stitch width, blah, 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 blah. I'm in control. So right now I'm just making a spiral, but I'm controlling my stitches. So you can sew super fast. That just means you need to move your hands super fast, or I can stitch super slow, but move your hands super slow. And I didn't think I would be giving you a free motion quilting um, lesson, but that's what we're doing. And you can see my tension is actually perfect underneath and on top, but this is your free motion quilting foot. So just know you need to move your hands equally when using it. Keep them away from the needle because there is no there's nothing to stop it from running over your fingers. If you have long fingernails, there's nothing to stop it from going into your fingernails. Ask me how I know. Well, trust me, I've been there, done that. So anyway, so that's the free motion quilting foot. That's how that works. All right, so I'm just gonna lift the foot. Oh, make sure you put your foot down when you're sewing. You don't want that up because it won't sew. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead, cut thread, lift this up and out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my pressure, pressure back the other way. I'm just turning my knob. You can see right here, it's going, that blue line is going back down. I want it just above that middle right there. That's about my normal. I'm gonna go ahead now and remove this foot. Just like this. And we're gonna put the original sewing foot back on here. Just like that. I'm gonna tighten it back down. Nice and tight. I'm gonna put this project back under here. I'm going to put my feed dogs. We're gonna go back over here. We're gonna flip the switch, engaging them, foot pedal down. And you hear that click, that click, re-engage them. And you can see. You could also quilt in circles with just this foot as well, if you wanted to. You can do all sorts of things with all the feet if you wanted to. You just adjust your fabric. So you can quilt with any one of the feet on this machine. So there that all is. Um, I think I'm not missing anything. Oh, inside here, this opens, by the way, to expose your light. So inside here, your light is right here. You could actually cover that if it's too bright or you have light coming from another source, but you really don't need to. On the side here, on the side here is just the springs and everything in there for your needle. You can check to see how much dust is in there, clean it out, whatever you need to do. It does get a little dusty in here every now and then. So if you have a vacuum or a way to clean it out, then that's how you would do it. But there that is. So you really don't need to mess with that, but you can open it again and get to things if you needed to. So there we have it, the Juki TL2010Q comes with quite a few little accessories. It sews beautifully. It's very quiet at first. You will start hearing it get loud over time. 
and just know if it starts getting louder, it could also mean you need to clean it out because sometimes it's louder when it's dirtier and filled with dust. In that case, you would just make sure you pop this open, pop that open and clean out underneath there. I would say clean it after every quilt. You can take a little dust vacuum or something and suck all the dust out. Or again, use the little brush that it came with inside of the little bag of goodies. But you could also use a makeup brush or whatever have you to get in there and clean it out. So after every quilt, I suggest cleaning it or after every project, however fits your lifestyle for sewing. So there it is in all of its glory. I like using the knee lift. I highly suggest getting used to having a knee lift. Um, they work better if you do not have a desk that has the drawers on the desk on the right side. So if you do want to get used to using a knee lift, make sure that you're using it on a desk that does not have drawers underneath it because the knee lift will not go if you're at the edge of your desk like a normal setup. Um, let's see, what else? Keeping it clean, that's highly suggested. Uh, winding bobbins, just pre-wind all your bobbins. If you're using the same thread, just pre-wind a ton and then set them aside. You can buy bobbins online for this separately, so you can have a hundred of them if you want in all different colors. You could also buy pre-wound bobbins. They do work in this machine. Um, everything is pretty self-explanatory. It's a straight stitch only machine. It is for piecing or making clothing or whatever you want to make with it. It just does a straight stitch only, but you can even applique with a straight stitch only. That's up to you. It's the user's choice on those kind of things. Um, don't forget to read your manual. Like I said, I'm really not a manual reader. Uh, if I did, I'd probably know more things about this machine, but I definitely don't read my manual. Also, don't forget that it does come with a cover. I do not have the cover out of here and I'm not going to open the cover, but just know when you do put the cover on, make sure that your thread guide is pushed all the way down. So this, make sure that your thread thing is on the down position. So that way the cover sits on it nicely. Other than that, um, I think I covered everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. And I hope that I was able to show you everything I possibly could about the Juki TL2010Q, including threading, winding the bobbin, and so on and so forth. How, I, how to change the feet. Things I've never showed you before with my other machine. And no, this is not going to sit on a shelf. Don't worry, guys. It will get used because not only I sew in here, when I have friends and family over, they sew too. And I want them to sew with speed instead of slowpoke Joes, you know. <laughs> Comparatively, I can say that after seven years of using this Juki, yes, I have blown a motor, but yes, it is still an amazing machine. And yes, I would obviously get another one. So it is definitely worth it. These machines are worth it either to own or it's worth it to fix it in the end if it doesn't cost as much as it you know does to get a brand new one if it breaks. But think about that if it happens to you in the future. But I've never had problems until recently. So I 100% highly, highly, highly recommend this machine. My favorite machine in the whole wide world to use is this Juki TL2010Q. And now I own two of them. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye.